Anyway, okay. Pretty sad is all I can say. Back right. to momisms. Hey, momisms. I'm, I'm on, man. How about jumping around like a fart in the bottle? Uh, <laughs> that would be a good though. They may be playing this for a younger crowd. <laughs> <laughs> got logical stuff. Well, I was the root of that. I wonder where he came up with that from. I don't know. Did you ever call out to us when we were jumping around? Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot. <laughs> and you're as useless as tits on a boar? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing I remember about Daddy, he never used the word damn or he never used bad language around us. No. But when when the men would be around, he'd be he'd be damning and Helen and <laughs> <laughs> Mary Kay and I would go out and hang out and listen to him, didn't we, Mary Kay? <laughs> uh -huh. Leo would be tongue tied if he couldn't have cursed. Oh um, what'd you say? G D this and G D that Leo. Oh Leo. He's cussing all the time. Mm -hmm. Here's a story. <clears throat> Our dad told about a guy who had a dog and he wanted to get rid of it. So he took it away, away from the house. He went home and the dog was back there. It happened a couple of times. So he took the dog out, tried to stick a dynamite to it. <laughs> it started running home and the dog came behind him. Blew it up and he had the dog all over his back. This guy he was telling the story to so he killed the dog. <laughs> the guy talking to was so disgusted. <laughs> anyway, some of you heard that for sure. Mm. Yeah. But the new joke was not that the man, the dog was all over him, but the new joke was that the man said, did the dog die? <laughs> did the dog that die? became the new, the new punchline. The dog he... died? That was... What did I say? That's what you said. Did the dog yeah, the die? Dog. The guy who was listening to it said, did the dog die, right? Yeah. Carl said that. The only that was, thing is uh, kind of the same. But that's the new punchline. <laughs> did the dog die? The funniest <laughs> thing with mom was the pearl in the weenie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> writing so, uh, down. Do you remember that one? Sure. Repeat it, Ann. Well, it was over at Jackson Park. I, I don't know that I can do it credit, but it was Jackson Park and Daddy had a long, um, long stick with a, with a burnt weenie on it. And it was for 4-H. It was all the 4-Hers over there and having a picnic. And uh, Art came along behind Daddy and hit the um, stick and the weenie flew up and hit Pearl in the face. <laughs> Wasn't that it? Pearl and the weenie? No, and so she no it, was just the, it was just the other way around. Um, what's it, her husband? Art. Art. But Art, 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 Art had the, Art, and Art she went the, after Art. Art had the long stick with the weenie on it, and it was oh, his okay. weenie and hit her, and she turned around and saw that he had the weenie, and she was <laughs> yelling at him, and she said, and he said, <laughs> That was Hub that did it. <laughs> and Daddy had walked and hit it. Oh, okay. Stick. And, so, and Daddy was looking so innocent. <laughs> but what was funny is Mom could never tell it. Mom would laugh so hard. She, we would say, Mom, tell us about Pearl and the Weenie. <laughs> and she could never get through it. <laughs> she was not part of it at all, but she thought it was hilarious. Uh. What about, let me I remember it so well. I can still see Pearl with that black smudge on uh -huh. her <laughs> <laughs> Art! Art, she said. <laughs> Milk it some more, Trace. What? <laughs> Milk that joke some more. Then let me know when you're done. <laughs> Go ahead. What about the story or the joke, let me down easy, boys? That was someone throwing their voice. Yep. When they do, you know, very, very do you know that one, Chuck? Tell it. Well, there are many versions of it. <laughs> one version is four black guys were carrying the casket. 
and he said, let me down easy, boys, and they just shouted and took off running and dropped the casket. And uh, there are versions that don't, don't have blacks carrying it. But I guess blacks are more susceptible to uh, people in caskets talking to them. <laughs> 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 but let me down easy, boys. Mom would tell that again and again. Mm. Yeah. And paw under the load of hay. Oh, she could oh. always get it wrong. She, she would right. say, did you hear the story about Paul uh, pa under the load of hay? And then she got to the end and she said, and where was Paul? <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you remember how she could never say C-A, well, A-U, the sound ah? She would say, she couldn't say caution. She would always say caution. I want to caution you or caution you. She couldn't say it. There was something about that sound that she had a problem with. Mm. And anytime she came to one of those words, it was always either oi or ah. She couldn't do the ah huh. sound. Huh. Caution. How many in the family said wash for washing your car or washing anything? Wash. Instead wash. of wash. We all said wash, didn't we? Yes. I think we, I think we grew up saying wash. Right. That was a Midwest thing. When I spent time as a counselor in Duluth, I'd lead the kids to lunch or all the meals, and I'd say, let's go wash up, and they'd be walking behind me saying, let's go wash up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd start to say wash. <laughs> After I met Tim in Detroit, I said genuine, and he started laughing at me, and I had no idea what he was laughing at. <laughs> But he thought I was being funny by saying genuine. Mm. <laughs> I like genuine. Sounds proper. I remember telling somebody one time as we grew up that we never knew the N word. We didn't use the, nobody around us ever used the N word. And he was so impressed. And okay. he said, and I said, uh, all, they all call, we all called them darkies. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that was that was a terrible thing we mm -hmm. really well I can remember being out on the uh basement door cave door and we have to we'd have to go out and go to the bathroom before we went to bed at night and I was probably about six or so and John and I said that word and mom took us in the house and set us down at the kitchen table and told us we never say that word the n-word what the, the n-word Yes, uh-huh. Hmm. Don't say that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember she, asking her one time. She where? was. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I remember her saying she was pretty open about African-American people because she said she would always try to even it out. But she would say white trash are much worse. <laughs> she would say white trash are much worse. Well, she taught blacks all the way through school. Yeah. And she really, she really liked them. And I remember her telling the story of the woman who came that they had a lunch and the women brought a meal and then people were to bid on it. And the word went around which one was hers. And mom said it was the neatest and the most lovely basket of all. And nobody would bid on it. <clears throat> she felt so bad about that. Well, you had to eat with the person, didn't you? Maybe. I guess that's what it was like then. Mm. Yeah, I remember box lunches. How people survived all that. Wasn't that in Oklahoma? Didn't they, I think, didn't they bid on the lunches? Uh-huh, they did. Kept bidding it up and up. I wanted to get uh -huh. her whoever. Mm -hmm. One with Shirley Jones, was that it? Shirley Jones and, Gray, and um, Gordon McRae and uh, what was his name? The one who played Curly. What well, was Curly and Judd? Poor Judd is dead. Yeah, but they bid on her box lunch. Right. Well, that was kind of a thing. Which woman got the biggest bid? Mm -hmm. I remember Genevieve and Francis talking about that, how many feelings were hurt, you know. Some oh God bid this, and someone just got a pittance. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Rod Steiger played Judd. That was right. 
Hmm. Where's Bill? I'm here. I'm listening. Tell us some stories. Some stories from Donovan, Bill. Do you remember some more? Oh, I remember one. When I was when I was in the first grade, I had to walk to school. And uh, to me, it was a long ways down to Donovan. And the uh, neighbor boy by the name of Coonert would come by, and sometimes he'd put me on his horse, and we'd ride to school. Oh, cool! Well, he had a he had a friend, and uh, one day we were walking to school, and I was walking with them. I was a l much smaller; they were in the upper grades, and they told me the bear lived. You know, you went down the road by our house, and the the road bent 90 degrees up toward Colgan's and the creek ran there. And they said, well, there's a bear that lives down there. Well, when I walked home, I had to walk by myself. And uh, I would dilly-dally and I was afraid to walk home. And when I did walk home, I'd cut across from Colgan's across the cornfield. And my mom would worry about me being late. And one one night I was coming home. It was real late. I'd played with some friends. And it was just about dark. And our dad met me half across the way across that cornfield. And he blistered me all the way home. Really? And I never, I never told him the story about the bear. Really, I would have told but him. But then, then I, then I feared my dad, and I feared the bear. <laughs>